Good afternoon, everybody. This is Scott McGann with the Falmouth Health Department. Today is August 13th, 2021, doing our weekly COVID-19 update. If you want to contact the health department, we're at health at falmouthma.gov. And our phone number is 508-495-7485. And we do have a COVID website where we try to keep the most up-to-date information. I kind of keep the basic sort of stuff on there. This presentation will also be on there as well. And so let's get started. So today's case count, well, I stop this every Thursday afternoon is uh, 1,650. There have been 20 cases during the seven day period ending the 12th with seven probables. Our positivity is from 2.47 to 2.62, so relatively stable but slightly up. Um, in terms of our case trends, you can see the last three weeks, the far right, you see the three dots are relatively around the same 18 to 20, you know, 18 low, high teens to low 20s. Seems where we've been in the last three weeks. Our case train to see a slight tick upwards. You want to keep this as flat as possible. It indicates that you're not getting an increase in cases. So we've had an increase, but not a real high increase. But we definitely have had an increase of, uh, with Delta since you know mid. I would say mid July. Um, as far as now, one of the things about the vaccines is vaccines are effective. Vaccines have worked really well at keeping hospitalizations and deaths down, um, which is the ultimate goal. Um, that breakthrough cases do occur, um, they do seem to be milder, so um, the vaccines are working as, as advertised. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have the, the count, Barnstable County does send us this um, update about uh, hospitalizations. They hadn't done it as of, I, as of doing this presentation at noon on Friday. So I do have last week's, I don't feel it's much different, but you can see that we've not had an increase in hospitalizations where the hospitals can't handle it or the surge that you're seeing in places such as Louisiana and Florida. Um, we're not seeing that here. Um, thank you for our high vaccination rates. And um, so that's where we are with, with cases for the week. So pretty much the th uh, three weeks in a row, very similar numbers. Um, the statewide seems to be right around 1,000 now, 1,100, 1,200, right around that area. Um, our positivity, I'll talk about in a second, is 2. Point, like I said before, it's 2.6. The state's is 2.86 for the seven days. Um, so, you know, gone are the days of 70 cases that we had, let's say, in June. Uh, all due to the Delta, definitely due to the Delta, mainly through the unvaccinated. Uh, the trends... The good, new, the good trend is the purple, which shows that you don't see an increase in deaths of the seven-day average. You're starting to see a little bit higher in the hospitalizations. Um, you do see a slight dip in the cases for a couple of days, but I don't know if that's going to stick. Um, you know, Delta is what it is. So um, in terms of where we are, um, the two things, when I talk a little bit about, you know, masks and the advisory and, and mandates and so forth, and, and this will... One of the other things we use is incident rate, which is the rate of the disease in a, in a 14 day period um, among 100,000 people. So you can see that, you know, Provincetown still having, you know, coming down. These, this data is always, you know, the last two full weeks. So this comes out midweek, so it doesn't count what's happening this week. But you, you, Provincetown still high, Truro and East Ham. Um, in Wellfleet as well, or in the 30s per 100,000. We're more like the other towns um, with the nine, we're at 9.2. Some towns are 10, 12, 5, 6, 7 in that range. So that's considered a low incidence rate. So that's um, one of the two things that we'll use when we talk about uh, mandates and so forth. So as far as face coverings, we have a mask advisory in indoor public spaces. We've had it since the guidance went away in May. And in July 30th, a mask advisory was issued to wear mask indoors if you're unvaccinated, vaccinated with a weakened immune system, underlying medical conditions, and so forth. And some settings for all, like public transportation, whether it be Uber or a school bus or a, a, a airplane or a train or whatever, the T. Um, they haven't really gone to us and talked to, to us indirect, directly about requiring mandates. The CDC came out um, with all unvaccinated should wear a mask, so it's similar. Uh, vaccinated should also wear a mask in indoor public places of areas of substantial or high transmission, limited health system capacity, and vaccination rates. So what does that mean? So the CDC's guidance on what's considered low, moderate, substantial, or high is that upper chart. So low would be 0 to 9 incident rate, like I said before, at 9.2%. Uh, po positivity of less than 5, we're at 262 
um, close to moderate in, in, in terms of its incident, but not quite. Um, substantial and high. Now, there was some talk over the week, last week, about um, Barnstable County being high. It's now insubstantial. And it's because it's going to take the, it, it appears to me it takes, it's, if it's got one community that's in the high, the entire county goes high. Uh, because the average of the county, I should have put that in here, but the average for the county is in the moderate to low, not in the substantial to high when you incorporate the entire county. So um, Falmouth itself is in the low category. The second thing you look at hospitalizations is the hospital hurting where they cannot, like you're seeing again in the TV, on the TV in Louisiana and some other states like Florida, um, we are not in that. And we're not in that now. Um, and we've done really well hospital-wise. And thirdly, you look at vaccination rates, and our vaccination rates are strong, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but we have 86% of all reg eligible residents have received at least one dose, with 78% of all eligible residents are fully vaccinated. So we know that the vaccines work um, for, the, the, for the major things, the major illness. Um, again, there is vaccine breakthrough, um, but those generally are mild, and the data is bearing that out. We have a high vaccination rate again. We have low hospitalization, and our incidence rate is not high. So looking at that and looking at the – is there, you know, no, one, no entity above us, such as the CDC's recommendations or the state's guidance, uh, has us in a point where we would initiate a mass mandate – um, the Board of Health, which I work for, um, could um, do so. Um, I could do so with a retroactive vote of it. Um, but we would be looking at this, I look at this anyway, as far as the, uh, our metrics of whether we'd go into a mask mandate or not. Um, you know, I do get um, residents who call me and who want a mask mandate. I've had people tell me that they do not want a mask mandate. So um, right now we're looking at that. In terms of schools, we're also looking at that as well. We'll have, there's a, a, schools will be sending out a, a forum for next week. We'll, I'll be on it next week. Uh, we'll look at schools as well. Uh, the, uh, the superintendent, myself, um, medical advisors and so forth, we do meet weekly on Friday mornings. And so you know, that'll come out um, prior to school. Um, and we'll look at that sort of separately from sort of the, the community itself. And so that's where we are with, with mandating it versus not mandated. I know there's some people out there, some residents who have emailed me who said that um, we, we, we need to have this and have this now, and we haven't done it. And I understand the concerns, but um, you know what we're looking at is data like this to see whether we want to or not. Um, again, that decision can come from, uh, comes technically from the Board of Health. I act as their agent. And so um, it either come from me with a vote for, uh, retroactively or it could be done by the board at any point through a public meeting. As far as vaccinations, uh, we had a 1% increase in the county. We're at 70% of residents are fully vaccinated. That is, um, besides uh, Nantucket and Dukes, that is the, looks like the highest of all the um, non-islands, so to speak. Falmouth itself, we've had a few good weeks of adding about 150 plus of new, new doses, about 100 uh, second doses. So again, 78%. Um, resident said first dose. I think I miscalculated. No, I got that right. So 78% have gotten their first dose of eligible people. It's 86% because you take away those that aren't eligible, those under 12. 71% are fully vaccinated, with it being 78 of eligible residents. Okay. So that's not bad. That's well, well, well above average. You can see we make gains in the younger groups. We just did a clinic this past week at this high school. For any student that wanted it, uh, that helped increase that number a little bit. Um, but you see the bigger increases generally in the younger category because if you're over 50, you've had so much opportunity to get it. If you haven't gotten it by now, you probably won't, but you should reconsider it if you can. Um, maybe it'll change with very shortly coming down the pike uh, would be um, the FDA approval for the vaccines as opposed to the emergency use authorization. Maybe that will help as well. But we're robust no matter what on our vaccinations. Uh, way to get a vaccine, still go on vac Mass Vax Finder, go on the va vaxfinder.mass.gov. Plenty, there's plenty of doses, pharmacies, um, you know, you can get, you can get doses, uh, Community Health Center, Barnstable County still doing one once a week over at the county complex. If you're homebound, you cannot make it to a clinic and call the Falmouth Health Department. We'll, uh, we'll work, I'll work with the VNA to help you get that uh, taken care of. Testing is about the same. You've got ConvenientMD is our big tester. You can use the um, 
the CVS's as well. Uh, there's the community health center that does it in Mashpee. Uh, you can still go through the hospital, through the drive-through at the, uh, uh, the hospital. Um, you know, that you'd go through your physician. They wanted an appointment for that, doctor's, doctor's permission. So you're, you'd contact your primary for that. Uh, and then starting on Sunday, August 22nd, we'll start running uh, Thursdays and Sundays from 4 to 6 uh, through, bar, through the fairgrounds. Same setup we had if you haven't got a test through there. It's a drive-through. You come through the east gate, stay in the car. It's a drive-through. So we'll start that up. You can do a walk-in or you can go through the Barnstable County Health website. So we're going to start doing some more testing out of there as well. Um, so, you know, um, there are some tests if you're symptomatic. Um, some people need it for certain conditions, like maybe traveling to Europe or something of that nature. But, um, you know, if you're symptomatic, been exposed, you want to be tested, you can. Um, and if you want to be vaccinated, you most certainly can. So as far as Delta, again, Delta, I should I meant to update this. This is well into 90% of all cases, very quick. It's way more transmissible. There's a higher viral load. One of the reasons why you have more symptomatic breakthrough is, is if you are vaccinated, it doesn't mean the virus doesn't get in you. It doesn't, you know, you don't have a barrier on your outside. You ingest it and it starts to grow and your body kicks in and does its job and kicks it out before you show any symptoms. With this being a higher viral load, you start off with a viral load that's much closer to being symptomatic. So as the virus, as the as the vaccine and your, your body's immune system from having the, the knowledge from the vaccine, it's starting out at a higher, really cl much closer to your symptomatic state. So you tend to have more people fall into the symptomatic as opposed to not having symptoms and not knowing that they were exposed um, when you have the Delta. So that's, I think, why you're seeing more vaccine breakthrough. It's not that the vaccines don't under, you know, recognize what to do. I mean, your body doesn't recognize what to do from the vaccine. I think part of it's got to do with your viral load. And this is a higher viral load. Uh, there's less less face coverings as things aren't shut down or, or reduced in capacity like they were before. Um, so you tend to see more uh, transmission, uh, more vaccine breakthrough, and that does occur. Uh, but again, uh, vaccine breakthrough is is, is not, a, not an issue, I guess, if, if it's an issue, but not as big of an issue as long as it's, it's keeping you from the seriousness of the disease. Again, if, was, if, this all, if this whole thing only caused the sniffles or caused a mild illness, we would not have been at the point where we got. We, it's because of the severity of it. And now you're seeing it among the unvaccinated, you know, the vast majority. So, um, you know, Delta is just about all the cases. That's, I assume they're all the cases since July. We had almost no cases at the end of June. The Delta, start seeing Delta around. And, um, you know, Delta was most of it at the Provincetown outbreak. And Delta is most of it throughout this country. So... Um, as far as a recap, again, virtually all guidance that was gone on the 29th of May. Vaccine eligibility is everyone over 12. Um, that may change relatively quickly. The vaccine also you may hear shortly being uh, off, uh, approved as opposed to emergency use authorization. Uh, our vaccination rates are similar to other Cape Towns, slightly higher, plenty of vaccine available um, if you want it. St uh, the state still showing an increase, you know, maybe a leveling off on the increase, but definitely an increase. Uh, but not seeing it in the hospitalizations of serious illness um, like it would, you know, without the vaccine. Delta variant's the one. Uh, vaccine breakthrough does occur, but it's still effective in the seriousness of the disease. I think I've said that three or four times. Falmouth case count has been averaging right around 20 or so a week. Um, you add in the providals, I mean 25, 26 per week. Uh, it definitely does bounce through family members relatively quickly. Again, high viral load close contact um, you then see I do see it in the cases that we do see it working its way through a family so you know of those 30 cases you might have a couple families with eight of those 30 cases in two households that kind of stuff does happen um, so um, you know sometimes it's not that easy in everybody's household to to isolate you know especially if you have small children or things of that nature so uh, more to come um, they'll be coming more out from the school department um, and you know, if there's any changes, we'll definitely um, have a, you know, we can have an, we'll have another one of these uh, presentations next week on Friday. Okay, thanks everybody. See you next week.